So, בעזרת השם, um, we're going to learn a little bit from Likutei Moharan. Rabbeinu is writing in the 27th Torah from Likutei Moharan something amazing. Rabbeinu is saying that if people want to bring other people to Avodat Hashem, they need to bring them closer to the Kedusha only through the aspect of peace. The aspect of peace, Rabbeinu is explaining, means by illuminating the face. What it means to illuminate the face? This is a rule that each and every one of us have to take very seriously and to work on it, to work on himself, that he's going to have that quality, that ma'ala, in his midot, in his avodata midot, means to smile, just to smile, just to smile to people, just to talk to people in a calm way and to listen to people and to be able to do that. When you're doing that, you can create a huge, huge, huge effect of pulling that person from the place that he is in. Because people in this generation live in a lot of anxieties and a lot of fears. And just the fact that you're smiling to him, that you're talking to him, just that feeling, giving to him that will, that he will going to climb and try to get to the place that you're holding in. He will have that desire to be close to you. And you don't need to pull him at all. You're just smiling to him and he wants to do all of the effort that requires to climb, to come, to be with you. Just because that you're smiling to him and you love him and you appreciate him and you're accepting him with all of his lackings. You know about yourself that you also have lackings. So are you clean enough to criticize and to think bad thoughts about others? Chas v'shalom. Everyone is working on himself, everyone is trying and we're all judging our friends in a positive way to kaf schut, to know for sure that for sure they're trying also to do all, all good and everything that they can to get closer to Hashem Barach. And we know that this world is full with Yetzirah, full with bad things and bad ideas and bad thoughts and fears and, and worries. So you can understand why a person have difficulties in his, in his Avodat Hashem. So Adraba, if you see a person that have lackings in the Avodat Hashem, you need to accept him, you need to love him, you need to illuminate your face to him. This is a secret. It can be very hard to understand to, to FFB, to the religious people. And... And they also have to wake up. What can we say? Rav Shalom said that in the beginning of his tshuva process, he said that in the days that he's going to see that the Frum people, the Haredim people, are doing tshuva, he's going to know that Mashiach is close. Because the Haredim, it's very hard for them to accept the Chilonim, the people that are far from keeping Torah and mitzvot. And they're all close together and, and they're not smiling enough, the Maise. And actually, Akadosh Baruch Hu is waiting to the ones that far and to the ones that close with the same heart. And he's got the same love to every Jew. And Akadosh Baruch Hu doesn't like a Jew that keeps mitzvot more than a Jew that doesn't keep mitzvot. Me until the age of 20, I wasn't aware to the importance of mitzvot. So, you think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu hated me in those days? Chas v'shalom. You can see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu done to me something that he haven't done even for a firm person. He went so down, so low, and gave me signs even that are, of course, a lot more than, than the merit that I had. Just his loving kindness went down and healed me and he talked to me and he explained it to me things and he sent messengers to me and he talked to me. So from that you can say that Adraba, even more so, he loved me even more than he loved someone else that can be close to the Torah from the first days of his life. That's going to be close to prayers, to shul, to Bet Knesset, to mikveh, to whatever. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves all of his sons and there is no difference between two Jews. Not a difference that we can recognize. And you can never tell, the Gemara is calling it, which Jew's blood is redder. You can never define who is better than the other. You can never. 
This is why all of that argument between Ashkenazim to Sfaradim, between the groups, Hasidim and Litvaks, and it's all imaginations. Because why you think that you are better? Just because that you are who that you are. But if you would be from the other side, you would think that you were better over there also. So it's just because that it's you. Not because that really you think that Ashkenazim are better than Sfaradim, or because that you think that Temanim are better than Marokaim. It's, it's all non nonsense. Americans more than English, English more than French, French more than... It's all imaginations. It's all sickness. It's all an advice of Yetzirah that he's trying to divide between the one nation that calls Am Israel. Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. There is only one God to all of Am Israel. So there is customs, there is um, different poskim. So it's great. But who is saying that that one is better than that one? It's all, it's all the will of Hashem Itbarach. It's all how that Hashem Itbarach wanted it to be. And you're not better than me in nothing. And I'm not better than you in nothing also. We're all the same. Hashem loves me very much and Hashem loves you very, very much. And it's all the same. And Hashem Yitbarach is helping you me in my life in an amazing way. And also Hashem is helping you. And Hashem Yitbarach is helping all of the Am Israel, all of the Jews. And if we're defining and saying there is a singer in Eretz Israel that he came from Russia, from Russia, and he said, over there in Russia, they would call us Jews. And when we came here to Eretz Israel, they start to call us Russians, Rusim. He said, it's craziness. In Eretz Israel, you're calling us Rusim? It's all, it's, it's contamination, it's Tum'ah, it's sickness of the generation to define, to make, to separate between Jews. You see a Jew, he should illuminate your eyes. And especially in the exile, in the horrible galut of United States and the galut of Europe. It's an exile, it's galut. You're all in exile, you're all in galut. When you see one of your friends, one of the brothers, you should hold him like you're holding life. He is your life. He is the rope. Maybe both of you together are going to find a lifeline to climb together to Eretz Israel, To come to live here with us. I know that sometimes it hurts to hear the truth, but Am Israel doesn't have nothing to do outside of Eretz Israel. Maybe you feel comfortable in prison. There is a lot of people that feel comfortable in prison, but you're in prison. It's not the truth to say outside of Eretz Israel. The gates are open. Kadosh, Kadosh Baruch Hu is asking, where are you? Why are you not coming to the land that I gave you, that I inherited to your fathers and forefathers, and now the gates are open? You can buy a villa in Jerusalem. You can buy a house with a backyard. You can live in Tzfat. You can live in Tveria. You can live in Tel Aviv. You can live in Jerusalem, in Bnei Brak. Why are you living so far? You don't want to be there when Bet HaMikdash is going to rebuild. You're afraid of money. Now your money is safe. You're afraid that you won't have Parnassah. You know that tomorrow you're going to have Parnassah in the United States. You never can tell. You can never tell. And Adraba should be brave to drop all of those nonsense and to come in Msirut Nefesh to Eretz Israel like us. When I came to the Yeshiva Chut Shel Chesed 10 years ago or so, I asked one of the Avrechim, I told him, you know, I have now in a, in a how you say, chisachon, savings, in savings, I have 40,000 shekels, something like $10,000. And uh, for now, I can live by that. But uh, what am I going to do in a few months? So he told me, in a few months, you're going to be like one of us. <laughs> that we're learning in the yeshiva. <laughs> we're all broke. <laughs> we don't have money. This is reality. We're learning in yeshiva, and it's a misirut nefesh. And if you believe all of that nonsense of the newspapers and, and news, and I don't know what, they're telling that avrechim are taking money. It's craziness. Every student in the yeshiva is gaining something like 1,000 shekels 
maybe 1300 shekels a month this is the maximum that an avrech in the yeshiva can gain so you cannot live by that you cannot pay rent by that it's maybe enough for for electricity and uh, and i don't know what else maybe water this is it you cannot pay rent you cannot have a car you cannot it's all mesirut nefesh people are sitting and learning from the morning until afternoon and then they're going to work and there are people that working in the mornings and afternoon they're grabbing a little bit of torah sitting opening a few books something it's a mesirut nefesh but so what so live your life in mesirut nefesh and decide i'm part of am israel and i don't want to have no share with the other nations that were stuck between them that who knows what's going to be one day when they're going to wake up to rebuke us. Like that it happened a lot of times. And we're not here to let no one be afraid, but Rabbi Isai, wake up. You're in a golden prison. You think that it's all good, that it's all nice. It's not that nice at all. <laughs> You're losing your sons and your daughters to the hands of those nations. And with mixed marriage and I don't know what. And working between them and learning from their behaviors. You cannot avoid that. You cannot avoid. It's Gzirat Shmad. You're losing your Judaism. Maybe not in this generation, so in the next one. Not in the next one. Maybe you're going to be survivors until the next one. But what's going to be in 50 years? No one going to stay. No one going to stay. No one can. There is millions against you. And we all have to come here to support the brothers here in Eretz Israel. that also here we have a lot of problems and we need your help. We need you to come to help us. We're asking, reaching for help. We need your support. We need you to come to be with us, to help us against the enemies from outside, from inside that we have. More religious people, more frum people, more Hasid Breslev people, more people to pray, to do Sha'a. Boy, say thank you. Welcome home. Thank you very much.